All right, before I start drawing this mask, I just want to give you a warning that Premiere Pro's masking tools aren't the most sophisticated tools out there. You can get some basic masking going, but typically if you want, if you're doing something for, let's say a feature film and you want very specific masks, you'd want to do that in After Effects because you get a lot more flexibility, freedom. Their tracking tools are pretty significantly better than Premiere Pro. But for this example, I'm assuming that this is for a beginner and intermediate uh, user. So we're just going to use Premiere Pro's mask and use it to the best of our ability. So to start with, we're going to create that mask on that opacity layer. The reason why we're creating a mask on opacity is because it'll hide everything that is outside of the mask. So that's the basic idea. We're gonna crop out sections of Ashley that we think are better, and then we're gonna put it on top of the background to kind of create that nice separation, to create that depth of only parts of her are being illuminated by this light and the rest of her is in shadows. When you're drawing the mask, you want to try and draw it around areas where you think or where you feel the light is going to illuminate your actor. So for me, I because I had this light already in place, I'm just following where the light is naturally falling off. So it's kind of around her face and pretty much boundaried by her hair. This first mask that you're creating it's not the final version so you you want to just kind of guesstimate where you want it to be I created that mask and I can immediately see that this is not quite working as well um, it's too harsh of a boundary between the foreground and the background it's not blending in smoothly we're gonna jump right into that but the basic idea is you want to create a mask that is rough that you know you're gonna change but you're just kind of working with it for now and trying to find out the best possible place to draw that mask and to blend it perfectly with that background the first thing I want to do is increase that mask feather so what it really does is it does a swell job of blending in um, the mask really quickly so before I move any further, I just want to quickly point this out to you guys. So by just adding that little mask feather, it's really creating this fall off zone that replicates how light actually feels. Not exactly how light falls out, but to an extent that it's believable. Now we, what you want to do is you want to move those points that you already created and you want to move it to a place where it feels really natural, where it feels like the light is kind of falling off and hitting her, your character. In my example, it's Ashley. So for me, I'm just by looking at this picture, I can tell that it's really working well when it's just on her face. So I'm going to kind of move those points so that I'm maybe even creating a nice little shape along with their hair, avoid as much of the jacket as possible because that jacket, it just isn't working. So I'm gonna avoid that jacket, maybe even avoid her shirt and just get her outline of her hair because I think it'll make for a convincing mask. And that's part of building masks is that you wanna pick and choose your battles. You wanna go to spots that'll blend well because that's really what you're trying to do. You wanna create an illusion that makes sense for people you know it might not be a hundred percent accurate but the mind is not capable of processing that much information in 10 seconds maybe if somebody paused this scene and went frame by frame they'll notice it but in the context of a movie when they're already interested in the film they're not going to notice this make a few small adjustments here kind of just playing around with this there's no definite ways to do this you know, you're just trying to figure out what works better. So just play around with this as much as possible. Don't give yourself any restrictions. Just feel it out. Feel what looks natural. Well, again, I'm just checking to see how it looks. Just went with what worked for my scene and it was pretty much everything that was outlined by her hair and that shirt in there as well so this really works for me i mean just by looking at this picture i feel that this is a night scene already without doing a whole bunch of work and 
that's the great part about setting up your scene well you can just create these amazing effects with very little post-production i'm still not a hundred percent liking how this looks um, so I might do something a little different. I think it's a little too bright on her. So to just blend that out a little bit, I might just play with the opacity. If you're at a point where you really like how it looks for your particular shot, then go with that. This is all the stuff that I'm doing extra, or just really me being nitpicky about how I want the scene to be. All right, I'm just playing with that opacity a little bit, just to see what's going on, if it's something that I like or not. I kind of like reducing the opacity. I mean, it's very subtle, but I kind of like that. It's really a preference. Um, I think it worked perfectly fine without playing with the opacity, but I like it with the opacity down as well. 